Simon Oz, I actually met him on my very first day. So I'm, I'm Simon McIntosh Smith. These days I'm a professor of high performance computing at the University of Bristol, just around the corner. Um, but I met Simon Knowles on my first day, which I think was September 1994. So it was still in Moss. It had been acquired by SGS SG Thompson, as it was, uh, many years before, as we'd heard. But it was still in Moss. And Simon Knowles came up to me and said, I wanted to see what a Simon Macintosh Smith looks like. <laughs> and that kind of tells you everything you need to know about Simon Knowles. And he's been a, a, a real character and a really interesting person to know. To know ever since. So I, I joined, I, actually my first exposure to InMOS came in 1989 when I wrote my first ever parallel program. I was still an undergraduate and we, we learned this amazing parallel language called Occam and I was hooked. I was hooked the very first time I did it and I remember telling my mum I've been writing these parallel programs <laughs> and she wondered what on earth this was and I've kept working in this space ever since and then eventually one day um, a few years ago, my mum said, oh, I've got a new phone. It's, it's multi-core. That's parallel, isn't it? So my mum eventually knows what I've been doing for like 25 years. And it, it all finally makes sense. But I, I joined, I was actually one of the last four people to join InMOS. So it was still called InMOS. I had an InMOS contract. And that was in the September of 94. And I think in December, uh, we, we got the message that the InMOS brand was finally being retired. And it was just going to be SGS Thompson from that point on. And we were all a little bit sad. But um, I was actually a, a, an InMOS employee when I arrived. And I, I joined the Chameleon team that you've heard of quite a bit. So that's where I met people like David May. And uh, Andy Sturgis was my first boss. And many of you in the room I got to know there. And I learned an awful lot about uh, microprocessor architecture over the next four years. It was an amazing experience. I learned so much in that time. And then um, after about four years, I thought it might be cool to go and do something New and one of my friends, Dave Stuttard, who's here somewhere, he'd gone off to work at a startup called Pixel Fusion. There were some crazy people doing stuff with graphics, and that's where I then met people like Ray McConnell, and we were doing some completely crazy stuff there. But that was um, super exciting. And after we'd done the graphics for a few years, and that was really massively parallel stuff, and we've actually got Ray showed you one of the one of the cards. We've actually got some of the chips. You can come and have a look at the chips up close, the F-150, which was the largest chip that was possible to manufacture at the time. Um, it was, again, completely crazy, but massively parallel, one and a half thousand way parallel on a chip, fully programmable graphics, world's first fully programmable graphics chip. Sounds recent, doesn't it? That was the late 90s, right? So this was crazy stuff going on in Bristol. Sorry? Redundant and redundant process, yeah. So you could have better yield than you'd expect and things like that. So completely crazy stuff. Um, but after we'd done that for a few years, we thought, well, we, you know, we're not being crazy enough yet. So why don't we try and do something really general purpose? And a whole bunch of us, I think 25 of us, spun out ClearSpeed. I was one of the founders of ClearSpeed. Um, we did some really amazing stuff there. Uh, I think Ray mentioned the supercomputer in Japan, Subami, which is at Tokyo Tech. That was 2006. It was one of the 10 fastest supercomputers in the world, built using Bristol technology. It was the first modern accelerated supercomputer built using clear speed devices. If you see, uh, if you go to one of the supercomputer conferences today, they show the graph of all the big machines now that have graphics processors in. It goes all the way back to 2006 and it shows Subami 1. It says clear speed underneath it, even today, 12 years later. It's really, really cool. So I met lots more people in the room through Pixel Fusion and Clear Speed did some amazing stuff. And then back in 2009, joined the university. And through that, have gone on to work more and more in high performance computing. We're now working with uh, all sorts of companies. We've worked with Intel. We've worked with NVIDIA. We've worked with AMD. We're doing a lot of work now with ARM. And we're now working on the future of supercomputing. We're looking at how can we design really massively parallel architectures. We've got an exciting project starting up with Rolls-Royce, we're trying to simulate entire jet engines completely virtually so that you can design you know, much more uh, efficient engines before you ever actually build them using all sorts of technology developed here in Bristol. We're now working with some Japanese companies looking at processes that are sort of five, six years in the future, way faster than anything that exists in the world today. Um, and even companies like this. So this is, that's a modern CPU. That's how big they're getting now, they're absolutely huge. That's actually a Cavium Thunder X2, so that's a 32 core um, ARM-based chip. That's 32 really heavyweight cores, 2.5 gigahertz, uh, 32 megabytes of on-chip uh, L3 cache, and then now getting these really huge things. So, so from all the way working back at 
in MOS early on now to stuff that's going to be used to make future supercomputers, all because of in MOS, which is really exciting. Thank you very much.